डे 19 ऑफ 30 डे लीड कोडिंग चैलेंज एंड टुडेज प्रॉब्लम इज टू सर्च इन ए रोटेटेड सॉर्टेड एरे एंड इट्स लीड कोड प्रॉब्लम नंबर 33 सो फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट्स रोटेटेड एरे रोटेटेड सॉर्टेड एरे सो इफ यू सी दिस एरे ओरिजिनली दिस वाज अ 012 0 1 2 then 4 5 6 7 this array is sorted now what it has uh, we divide it into two parts bring it forward so you see it has been rotated so 4 5 6 7 lies here and here it's ascending then this reaches the peak at 7 see you can see something like this so this part originally should have been after this and let's say this is the value and it says that no duplicate so no two numbers are same if they are same they would come adjacent to each other or uh, the last and first would come adjacent to each other because after 2 4 comes but here no duplicate so they are strictly less so one index after that what will happen it will be like this and it will strictly lie below this line the value of the first index so everything from here to here in this array is more than everything from here to here if we put this ahead of this this will be a straight line and not a continuous line obviously some discrete values like here here but we have just broken that and shifted them left and right so this is the state of any array that we are given it may be possible that they are completely sorted in that case the rotation would be by 0 that is the length of sub array 1 or sub array 2 can be 0 but this is the general case so first uh, we will try to find this point the starting point this was the original starting point and uh, this was the original uh, ending point so i am denoting by left and right but here in this array rotated array this is the starting point this is the ending point so we know that if the array is sorted we can use binary search in order to do the search in logarithmic time log n searching in an array in order n time is, is very trivial you iterate you look each element and compare with the target value here the target value is 0 and our function should return 4 i have written the indices of the elements on top of that starts from 0 and at 6 and we see that 0 is at index 4 so it should return 4 on the other case if we don't find the element we should return minus 1 which is not a valid index so you can't find 3 here so you return minus 1 so searching in order n is not a big task you just compare each element and you will match with the target but if the array is sorted uh, we can do it in logarithmic time and here a slight complexity is that simple binary search will not work uh, first we will find this original starting point or original ending point whatever you want so let's say we find the original starting point and then we compare with the last element now let's say in step 1 we have found this we will see how to find the original starting point that is the minimum element in this array this is the peak maximum element and immediately after that we will have the minimum element this is the maximum peak and this is bottom so we are finding the bottom you can do it with peak also so how to find that let's assume we have found this bottom and we will denote that by l so after that what we need to do find min step 1 then step 2 what we will do we will compare the last element here and we have a target t we will compare t with this so either t will lie in this sub array sub array 1 or sub array 2 so if it lies in sub array 1 uh, 
then T will be less than or equal to S2. So if it's less than S2, it's less than everything in S1 because all the elements in S1 are more than the maximum value in S2. So if uh, T is less than, let's call it end and let's call it begin. If T is less than or equal to end, then search in S2 because T can only lie here. It's less than end, it's less than everything. Else, it's not equal to end, it's also not less than end, so that means it's bigger than end. So if it's bigger than end, uh, none of these elements are bigger than end, but all of these elements in S1 are bigger than end. So else we will search in S1. And once we execute one of these, that is search in S2, then this is not a rotated sorted array. This is a normal sorted array. Everything in this is sorted. So we can do it in log n time, log whatever is the length of S1 or S2. It will be obviously less than or equal to n, the earlier length. So we can assume that once we find the beginning or the minimum element, we can do it in logarithmic time. And this search is simple binary search. Now the task is how to find the min. So let's see how we will find the min. So we will compare the mid. So whatever is the original array, let's say mid lies here. The index is from here to here. Mid lies here and the value of mid is this one. So we compare, uh, this is the end. We compare with end. If mid is more than end, then we know that the mid is in S1. So this min will lie from here to here, this part, right? But if let's say mid lies here, then the mid will be less than S1. Then we know that this beginning point will lie from here to here. So in this way, either we will look from mid to end or we will look from beginning to mid and not both. So, so we will keep shrink shrinking the problem to half each time. So we just compare the mid with end. If mid is more than end, then we search for this min in mid to end, otherwise mid to beginning. So this step one can be done in logarithmic time. Because first step we have n elements, next we search in either first half of mid or second half of mid. So it becomes n by 2. Then it third step it becomes n by 4. In general, uh, at step 0 it's n divided by 2 raised to the power 0, then n divided by 2 raised to the power 1. So after kth step, the size is n divided by 2 to the power k. And if this k is log n, then it becomes n divided by 2 raised to the power log n, which is nothing but n. So n divided by n is 1. So after k steps, and k and this case occurs when k is log n, so after log n steps, we reduce the problem size to 1. And that is the index of this. So it will be done in log n time. We will take log n steps. So both step 1 and step 2 can be done in log n time. So log n plus log n, overall it's log n. So let's write the code for this. This condition we are satisfying. So let's begin writing the code. So first we will write it in C++, then we will modify it quickly in Java and Python. So that should not be a problem. So let's first uh, define a binary search function. And 
and it will also take vector int nums and int target and it will additionally take left and right. So we will either search in first subarray. So we will do binary search depending on uh, whether to look for S2 or S1 that is step 2. So you see search called in two conditions depending on whether target is less than equal to end or target is uh, greater than end. So this is uh, just, just generic binary search and no changes here. Here the nums will be already sorted and not rotated. These are one of the sub arrays S1 or S2. Mid equal to L plus R minus L divided by 2. You can also do this uh, L plus R by 2 and these are mathematically these are same thing because if you uh, take a common denominator you will multiply with 2 with L so numerator will become 2L plus R minus L which is L plus R divided by 2 uh, but the problem here is that uh, this let's say L is very large larger than int max by 2 and R is also let's say larger than that so if the combined value of this is more than int max then uh, you may get some negative values in this case left is a valid integer we are finding the difference here so difference will be either difference will be small only and we are adding this check so this can be either 0 or a number less than r or l and dividing by 2 with make make it even smaller but bigger than 0 so adding that will not reach that condition so that's why it's good idea to uh, find the mid this way so what we are doing here if nums mid is more than target so mid is more than target that means we have to search in left part of the array or r should be mid minus 1 first let's check if target equal to nums mid so if target is exactly equal to mid then return mid if it's not equal to mid then either target will be larger than mid or less than mid so let's say target is less than mid let's keep target before for consistency everywhere so target is less than mid and it's also not equal to mid so it will lie from beginning to mid minus one so uh, we shift the right to one less than mid and left remains unchanged so it will automatically search in left part else it's more than mid so left we will shift to one more than mid and these will stop when uh, L becomes R or L crosses R and if it doesn't if let's say L equal to R then mid will also be equal to L and R and so in that case we are just searching in one element so either that element is equal to target or not so if it's equal to target it will return that L or R or mid all are same if not then ultimately it will return minus one that is not found now let's define our main function if zero size then return minus one there is nothing here otherwise l equal to 0 
r equal to n minus 1. And we are finding here the minimum element that is this element. Again, mid. If mid is more than uh, right, so if mid is more than right, which is this case, mid lies in S1, then we have to search for this in mid to end. So nums r, r is the right index, then L equal to mid plus 1. else r equal to mid so here you see strictly more than so if it's equal to it will lie in this condition so let's see the case when they are equal uh, let's say mid is exactly this mid is exactly this point let's say then uh, we are looking in one more than this that is here to here and we are correct. If mid is exactly this one, then we are shifting right to here. So right becomes here and we are searching in this part and next time mid will be here and we will shift left here. So ultimately we will converge on this. Both L and R will come to that, that minimum. And now L is equal to the minimum element. So if target is less than equal to nums n minus 1. So target is less than end. Then it will lie in S2. L is the minimum index and last one right index is n minus 1. This is the S2. Else zero to L minus 1. And we should call return here and that should do. Let's try it on our example. Uh, use of undeclared identifier. Okay, this so this works. Let's try negative case which is 3 is not here. It's correct. Let's try on one element. And a positive case. And now it should work. So let's go ahead and submit. and this solution is accepted. Now we will uh, implement it in Java and then Python. And in Java, as usual, it does not require any major change.
let's try just one word change uh, okay and this int nums and it compiles that is it should work so let's submit and our solution is accepted now finally we will write the code in python and let's first copy the code then we will make changes invalid syntax self dot bin search So these should be int and not float. So we need to explicitly convert to int here. These are automatically converted in C++ and Java where we mention the type of mid. So now it's compiling. So it should pass the test cases as well as we have already seen in C++ and Java. So we have submitted and it's accepted as well in Python. So I hope uh, you understood the problem. You uh, understood the approach. First we find uh, the this element and then we compare with the end. If target is less than end, so it has to lie in this subarray S2. If it's more than end, then it has to lie in S1. So depending on that, we do a binary search in this sorted array or this sorted error.